Hey everyone. So today we're going to be talking about some patents that have now gone public for Breath of the Wild 2. Now we know these patents are for Breath of the Wild 2 despite them not claiming to be from Breath of the Wild 2 because they describe mechanics we have already seen in the second Breath of the Wild 2 trailer that happened at E3 2021. So because all of these mechanics seemingly are present in some form, although some things about these mechanics aren't present, at least in that trailer, doesn't mean they're not in the game. That's why we're talking about it, because we now know how some of these mechanics work, and we know additional information that's likely going to be applied to the game. All of these patents come from June of last year, uh, but obviously, you know, we have now passed the, the time of them remaining private, and they're now public. Uh, so this is all describing gameplay mechanics for Breath of the Wild 2. So we're not getting into the story details, uh, but the patents are long-winded, and we're going to go through the descriptions of all the patents and talk about this in detail. So I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but if you appreciate these in-depth looks at these patents, um, yeah, we're, I'm going to try to present imagery as well from the patents as well as from the trailer all along the way to help you guys visualize what's happening because not everything's going to be present, um, but we'll, we'll we'll do our best here. So thank you guys uh, for all of your support. Uh, we are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. If we can get to 80,000 subscribers in the month of December, uh, we have something extra special planned for you guys. We still have time to do it, like 15 days to pull it off. So let's see what happens. Uh, beyond all of that, we are giving away three copies of Pokemon Legends Arceus. All you have to do is head down to the description or the pinned comment uh, and click on that viral sweep link. All right. I would, otherwise, I would appreciate likes and all of that on this video. Let's get into the patents. So the stuff described in these patents um, happens in the trailer for the game. That's how we know that it's for Breath of the Wild 2. Um, I'll give you an example. At, in the E3 2021 trailer, we see Link sort of warp up to the sky through a flat surface. And a patent application number 2020-96009, it shows and describes a character being able to move through the ceiling based on the player's actions and the formation of that ceiling. In this case, if the formation of the ceiling is slanted, the character cannot morph through it. If it is flat, they can. This suggests naturally that this is a possible consideration for Breath of the Wild 2, where you can only morph through flat surfaces. This also suggests the ability may not be limited to going to the sky. In the diagram, it happens to show a cavern-like place, and the background and summary of the patent states a number of important things. Here is what matters. In a player-controlled character can jump high. However, if a terrain object is present above the character, it is not possible to move the, pair, the character to the upper side of that terrain object. At first, this makes you think, well, that's kind of like Mario, right? You can't jump through the ceiling. Um, however, the diagram clearly shows what they mean by a terrain object. It is something that is slanted and not flat. Um, an example of a non-transistory computer-readable storage medium stores a game program to be executed by a processor. I know that's a bunch of mumbo-jumbo you guys don't need to worry about. Um, but the program causes the processor to execute, performing a normal movement control, including at least the control of in a virtual space, including at least a player character and a terrain object. So they're basically talking about how the computer is going to handle processing a terrain object and player character at the same time. Uh, moving the player character on the terrain object based on the operation input performed by the player, so based on what you do with the controller. And performing a special movement control of moving the player character to a destination based on the operation input performed by the player. So based on whatever button input you hit or whatever item you use will determine, you know, you morphing through the ceiling um so it says if it is at least satisfied that the terrain object serving as a ceiling is present above the player character and that the destination on the terrain object in which the player character is placeable is present above the ceiling located above the player character so essentially you can't just willy-nilly morph through every ceiling there, there are things that need to be met first off the ceiling needs to obviously be flat and and be of the right type of ceiling to morph through and then on the other side of that ceiling needs to be a morphable to area so you can't just free do this it's going to be um very obvious i suppose which areas in which you can morph up and not uh so yeah it's basically just describing that you know whether you're underground or whether you're going up to the sky it's going to be sort of designated areas that kind of let you do this all right so according to the configuration, um, when the terrain object is located above the character player, the player the player character can be moved to an upper side of the terrain object. So this is like, hey, if there's a special location here above uh, the, the ceiling terrain or whatever that you can morph to, you are able to morph to it. In the special movement control, it is further satisfied that the terrain object serving as the ceiling is present within a predetermined distance upward from the player. Okay. 
I think that makes sense. The game program may cause the processor to execute, performing a control of moving the player character to the destination based on the operation input by the player. So again, no matter how far away the ceiling is, if it's possible to morph through it, you can do button inputs to do it. Okay, we saw this actually in the trailer when he morphed all the way to the sky. According to the configuration of above, if the terrain object serving as the ceiling is far distant from the player, so again, this is going to the sky, it is possible to reduce the possibility that the player is moved. So in other words, you can't just willy-nilly morph to the sky. Like you can't just, wherever you're running around, morph to the sky because, hey, the sky might be considered flat in the game code, but you can't just willy-nilly do that. It's going to be designated areas that, that reach things that you might not be able to see from the ground. So that, that, that's kind of what they're describing here, and that is something we saw in the trailer. Um, in the special movement control, the game program may cause the processor to execute, performing a control of moving the player character to the destination by moving the player character upward from a current position and further moving the player character so as to pass through the terrain object from the ceiling. So again, this is the exact wording that tells you this is Breath of the Wild 2. According to the configuration of the above, it is possible to allow the player to intuitively recognize that the player character passes through the terrain object when moving from the current position to the destination on the terrain object. So you can literally see your character pass through. This isn't going to be something that just happens in a blank black screen. When moving the character to the destination by the special movement control, the game program may cause the processor to execute displaying different animations between a case where the player character moves inside the terrain object and a case where the player character moves outside. So you're going to see the character enter, um, basically go into and out of. You're not going to see what happens, obviously, in between the surfaces. According to the configuration above, it is possible to allow the player to easily recognize that the player character moves in the, into the terrain object. So you'll be able to know this is happening. It won't be a surprise. The game program may cause the processor to further execute performing according to its first instruction by operation input performed by the player. I know. It's a lot of technical mumbo jumbo going into how things work behind the scenes. Just stick with me, guys. Determination as to whether or not a determination condition is satisfied, the determination condition being that the terrain object serving as a ceiling is present within a predetermined distance upward from the player character, and that a destination on the terrain object is present above the ceiling located above the player character. And display of the result of the determination and performing in the special movement control, a control of moving the player character to the destination in response to a second instruction by an operation input performed by the player in a case where the destination condition is satisfied. So again, this is kind of a summary of everything we talked about. Conditions need to be met in order to do this ability. The player can confirm whether or not movement of the player character into the realm object is possible and therein thereafter perform this, the second instruction for causing the player to actually move. So what they're saying is you don't just get to these spots where you can transform above and it just happens. You have to confirm that you want to do it. And if it can't happen in a certain area, the game will say, hey, you can't do that here, right? So people are, might be able to attempt to use this ability anywhere. But the game will tell you if you can and can't and then confirm if you want to use it. So you don't just accidentally button hit something and, and, and go, right? I think that's just to get rid of that accidental, oh, my finger slipped or, oh, I didn't mean to do that or, oh, I bumped the controller. Now where the hell am I? Like, they're, they're, they're trying to make it very obvious that it, the movement you're doing is what you want to do. All right? So what? Uh, so in determining whether or not the determination condition is satisfied, determination as to whether or not a terrain object serving as a ceiling is present within the predetermined distance upward from the player character may be performed based on whether or not a determination shape, which is virtually placed, has a predetermined height and extends upward from the position of the player character and is in contact with the terrain object. So this is just, you know, you, you have to be transported to a terrain object. If there's like a floating thing in the middle of the sky, like a, let's say a ball, you can't transform up to the ball. You might be able to get to the ball from the upper terrain, but you won't be able to transmog onto it. You're going to have to go through... Um, you're gonna ha you're gonna have to go through the actual normal flat terrain. It's essentially what this is all saying. So it, it, this is obviously extremely interesting, and there's a lot more to this patent. Um, I was reading all of it, and it's basically the um, same thing over and over. Like this one says, as as for the determination as to whether or not a terrain object serving as a ceiling is present within the predetermined distance upward from the player character, the game program may cause the processor to further execute determining based on the state of the part of the terrain object which is in contact with the determination shape, whether or not part of the terrain object is regarded as the ceiling. So there's just a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes with the calculations to determine where and when you can use this ability. Um, so yeah, 
it, it gets into a lot of the nitty gritty of the programming details. That's obviously what they're patenting. They're patenting how this is done, not the idea itself, right? You can't patent an idea like this, but you can patent how the idea is executed. And Breath of the Wild, as we know, well, has a very nice um, physics system in them, and it seems like they're trying to um, expand that physics system to this new ability. All right, so that's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, now we get to our second patent. This one's um, really interesting because this this refers to the the when when that ability that Link shows in the second trailer where he's rever seemingly reversing time on an object and sending it back up the hill. Uh, it looks like a, a really badass ability. Um, but let's actually figure out how this works. So here we get into the description of how this works. There are conventional game programs in which the motion of an object provided in a virtual space is utilized. However, in such game programs where the object has moved in a virtual space, a reverse motion of the object returning to its previous state before the movement cannot be utilized. So this is a situation where you can't use this, okay? So they're describing a situation where you can't use it. So they're, they're, So however, in such programs, when an object has moved in a virtual space, a reverse motion cannot happen. So I think this is, is talking about if it naturally occurred. Like if there's a physics-based thing, like um, you know, a barrel explodes and rocks are flying and Bokemons are flying, you can't reverse the time of that barrel explosion if it was naturally occurring um, and, and, and put everyone back. So they're basically saying there are determining factors that you can't use this ability on everything. It's going to be... Probably more predetermined objects and stuff. If you think about um, the abilities back in Breath of the Wild, a lot of that was like on predetermined objects. I think that's what this is. This is trying to refer as well. So this will not apply to everything in the game. You can't reverse the motion of everything in the game, right? So that 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 seems to be what they're talking about here. Um, all right, going on it says under the above circumstances. It is an object of the present non-limiting example to provide a storage medium, storing a game program, game apparatus. This is just talking about what all the things that go into making a game and game processing method in which while the position and orientation of an object in a virtual space are caused to return to their previous states, the returning motion or reverse motion can be utilized. So my interpretation of this, and again, I'm not like some lawyer or anything, and they might not be able to answer this either because they might not have extensive experience with Breath of the Wild, um, is basically it's an intentional thing. The player intentionally did cause something to happen, which they can intentionally then reverse. Um, such as the ball or whatever, boulder or whatever that we see falling in the second trailer. To achieve the above object, the present non-limiting example may have the following configuration. So now we're going to get into how this ability works. A non-limiting example of a non-transistory computer-readable storage medium having stored there in a game program of the present non-limiting example is executed. So this is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo to say, okay, this is the parameters that enable this ability to be usable. Okay. Um, is executed by a computer including with the information processing apparatus the game program causes the computer to execute so again this is where they are able to enable this ability to reverse time controlling a player character in a virtual space based on the user's operation input um, recording op uh, positions and orientations of objects in a range in the virtual space into a memory at time intervals so that the position and orientation are stored in chronological order in the memory changing movement related parameters used in virtual physical calculations such that a designated object of the objects which is selected based on the operation input so basically you select an object ahead of time that's going to do something and then reverse time that's what they're saying so it's based on user input what object you can reverse time on okay that's pretty typical that's why things worked in breath of the wild you know you you would magnetize and lift objects based on the object that you pointed your ability at and used that's what they're saying here this is going to be similar to that you're going to be able to select which objects before you reverse time that you potentially potentially not necessarily but potentially want to reverse time on before you interact with that object so it, it kind of makes sense it's describing a user interaction in this case all right um so yeah, it uh, it changes the movement related parameters used in virtual physical calculation such that a designated object of the object which is selected based on the operation input is caused to perform a return movement to return to the previous positions and orientations stored in the memory sequentially backwards from the time giving a start 
instruction based on the operation input. So this is based on user input and updating a state in the virtual space, including the player character, the designated object and other objects based on the virtual physical calculation. So this is just taking into mind all the other objects impacted by the object that you're reversing time with. This is how you can get maybe like roll down the hill, double hit, send it back up, you know, re-hit, re-hit those same, same guys again. Um, and seemingly what looked like slow motion thus a novel game can be implemented in which while the position and orientation of an object in a virtual space are caused to return to their previous states the returning motion or reverse motion can be utilized in the return movement of the designated object at current point during the return movement the position and orientation recorded earlier into the memory may be set as a target position and orientation and a velocity and angular velocity or an acceleration and angular acceleration of the designated object may be changed the parameters such as the de- designated object returns to the target position and orientation. So when I read that section, it kind of describes the potential of being able to um, modify the position, velocity, and, and all that of the return. Um, like if it's going down the hill at a certain speed, maybe you want it to go back up the hill slower. Maybe you want it to go back up the hill at the same speed that it came down. This seems like there is a user input um, capability here to control how that object returns to its position. It's going to follow the same path, but how does it return to that position? How quickly does it return? You know, it, 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 it basically sounds like you might be able to upgrade this to get additional uh, control over how the reverse functionality works. And I like they're calling it reverse. They're not calling it reversing time um, because maybe it's not time reversal. We, we all viewed it as time reversal, but it might not be messing with time. It might, it, it might be just a, a certain ability. We'll see what they call it in game. Um, So the time intervals at which the positions and orientations are recorded may correspond to a frame, which is a unit time of display, and the positions or orientation may be stored in the memory on a frame-by-frame basis. So they they can literally store it down to a frame-by-frame basis. They don't need like a section of frames. It can be one individual frame that gets stored in memory to determine how to send the object back. Um, So it says the positions and orientations recorded into the memory at time intervals may correspond to at least a first period of time immediately before the time of giving the start instruction. So obviously they're going to record exactly where it was before you started motion of that object. Thus an object is caused to perform a return movement based on the stored positions and orientations corresponding to the most recent first period of time. Therefore a motion that tracks backwards changes in position and or orientation of the object remembered by the user and it can be implemented. Um, the game program may cause the computer to further execute in response to completion of the return movement of the designated object to the position orientation recorded into the memory the first period of time before, or to the instruction to cancel the return movement by the operation input ending the return movement. So it sounds like as the return movement's going on and going backwards, you can cancel it at any time, and then it will just continue to do whatever the hell it's doing based on the physics engine, right? So you don't have to return it all the way back to its beginning starting position. You can cancel it mid-return if that's beneficial to you, which, again, led to the credence and the expandability of the original Breath of the Wild because, yeah, you could cancel your abilities mid-use all the time, so this is just sort of showing that this ability has that capability uh, to do. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of user choice in how you use this ability, essentially. And then there goes on to um, a lot of talking about um, the, the same thing sort of summarized in a different way for how it's going to work on the programming level. So uh, one part I do want to get into is thus even uh, so so even in the case of a failure to return to position because again what if you can't return it to the position what if the movement from that position caused something to happen that makes a return to the original position impossible right I don't know what this might be maybe maybe it's the case where you moved an item which caused an explosion which made something fall in its original position blocking the ability for that object to get back to its original position. That's one one thing I can think of here, where you have a falling rock, it makes a barrel explode, some boulders fall, it covers up that original position, you can't return to it, right? What the hell happens then? Like, remember, Breath of the Wild's a physics-based game, so Breath of the Wild 2 is going to have a lot of physics involved. So what the hell happens if you can't get back to that position in some very unique situations? So, the uh, what happens is the return movement is just ended. It tries to go back, and then it stops at the point that it can't go back anymore. So it just automatically stops. The game program may cause the computer to further execute based on the selection of start instruction based on the operation input, based on user input, causing a game mode to transition from a normal mode in which the selection of the designated object is disabled to a selection mode in which a selection of the designated object is enabled. And in the selection mode, rendering an object selectable as a designated object in a display form different from the normal mode. So what this is saying is, remember how like you'd bust out your... like 
your um, mag- magnesis ability in Breath of the Wild, and the world would turn like a different color, like you have that like, yellow hue, and it would be like a pulsating thing, and you could see which objects you could magnetize and lift, chest, beams, doors, etc. Same thing. They're saying that this is an ability that you trigger that will change your viewpoint from the normal view of the world to something else that will show you which objects you can use this ability on. Again, this isn't surprising because it's how it worked in Breath of the Wild, but we never saw that in the trailer. So this is new information on how this ability works. It's not just willy-nilly reverse time on everything. Now, we did actually see it change a little bit of colors when it was reversing, but apparently you select this before the the actions even happen. That's the crazy thing. So like, you're not just stopping at mid-action you're able to select it before the actions occur. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that play out. It should feel very similar to Breath of the Wild. Kind of like a new slate ability. That's what this feels like. It's a new slate ability that people are going to have a hell of a lot of fun with and abuse the hell out of. And I can't wait to see the crazy physics things that people come up with for that. But I'm glad that we addressed um, how, it, how, you, how you're able to enter this new mode. And then, obviously, um, what happens if for some odd reason it can't actually return to its original position thus a selectable object can be presented as a designated object to be caused to perform return moving differently so again this is just letting you know yeah you'll know ahead of time what objects you can use the ability on if you enable that mode the game program may cause the computer to further execute controlling a virtual camera based on the operation input in the selection mode in presence of an object selectable at the designated object at a display position of a pointer Disposed at a position in a screen, selecting the object as the designated object and in presence of the selected designated object, starting the return movement of the designated object in response to a start instruction. What this is saying is they're going to take the camera angle and change it. So normally the camera angle is like behind Link, right? Or off to the side, you could free move it a bit. Um, to, what they're saying is there will be a fixed point on a lot of these interactions with this particular item that gives you a better camera view of the item to know when you want to start the instructions to return it. So it's going to give you an ideal viewpoint to screw around with reversing an item. So that is something we didn't know. Now we do know. It's going to give you an ideal viewpoint on select items to reverse them it without having to worry about where the player character is located. So the player character say at the bottom of the hill, but you don't know if that's really you don't want to wait till it's almost hitting you to reverse it, right? Maybe there's a better timing to reverse it for different reasons. Um, yeah, they're they're gonna change the camera angle um, and put it at a different fixed point so you can obviously do that. So yeah, that's a that's just a, a gameplay thing, but it is notable because we didn't know that was a thing. Uh, thus, in the return movement, the state of the object is not caused to return to its previous state. Therefore, a novel game can be implemented, which is different from games in which an object is caused to only return to its previous state. So this is where something different might happen if it can't quite get back to its original state. The state change may include a disappearance of the object. So this is a worst case scenario. You try to return the object to the spot. Something happened that makes it so it can't return to that object. And it defaults to wanting to let the object go and go do something. But if in that default of letting that object go, it's going to cause a bug, cause a crash. The game's just going to delete the item from the game. It'll just remove it. Now, it doesn't mean that item won't come back, but this is like one of those, this is a bug catching moment. This is a shit. The game's about to break. Let's just delete this item so we don't break the game, right? So this seems more like a, a bug catching moment. It says, in response to the disappearance of the designated object during the return to movement, the return movement will be ended. So if the object just disappears to protect the game itself or protect the code, um, they're just going to get rid of it and move on with your day. Uh, thus, when a state change occurs, which causes an object to disappear. So this is what happens when an object disappears. During a return movement, the return movement has ended. Therefore, a novel game can be implemented in which a which is different from games in which an object is caused to only return to its previous state. So they're saying, obviously, the item being deleted is different than it being able to go back to its original spot. Uh, the present non-limiting example may be implemented in the form of a game apparatus, game system, or game processing method. In the present of a non-limiting example, a game can be implemented in which, while the position and orientation of an object in a virtual space are caused to return to their previous states, the returning motion or reverse motion can be utilized. So, again, this is just describing stuff we've already known. These and other objects, features, aspects, and managers of the present exemplary embodiment will become more apparent from the following detailed descriptions and 
then they present, present a bunch of drawings, which I've been showing a lot of these drawings throughout to sort of show what they're talking about. Now, the drawings might not line up exactly what I said. They're just examples. Um, so hopefully uh, I did a good job splicing in the footage and all that. Again, you're going to see a lot of the same footage on repeat, guys, in this in this video. So um, it's a really long video because we have three full patents to get to, not just one. So patent number three. This one's the most fascinating one because it shows new capabilities of Link um, beyond stuff that we've seen. That's what's cool about this one. Some of it will, you will see lines up with what we've seen, but the rest of it is like, oh, Link's got some new abilities, man. Now that's badass. So let's see what happens here. Um, conveniently in a virtual game space, a player character is caused to perform an action of shooting an arrow with a bow while the character is in the air. Now, we know in Breath of the Wild you could jump up and shoot an arrow in slow motion. So, okay, that doesn't sound new. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, since the player character shoots the arrow in a standing position, when it is premised that the char player character should take a natural posture, the player character cannot shoot the arrow vertically downward, which may restrict the direction in which the player character can shoot the arrow. So when you're standing up shooting an arrow normally, you can't point the bow and arrow straight down and shoot. It just you, you can point it down at an angle, but you can't point straight down. So like this is a limitation of the standard position. Okay. Therefore, the present application discloses a storage medium and information processing apparatus and information processing system and a game processing method. Again, this is just the order of operations for how this all works. Capable of increasing the degree of freedom of the direction in which a player character performs an action while naturally expressing the posture of the player character in the air. So in the process of the air, you're going to have some more freedom of movement compared to in a standard position. An example of a non-transistory computer-readable storage medium stores a game program to be executed by a processor in an informational processing apparatus. The program causes the processor to execute controlling a player character in a virtual space based on an operation input performed by the player. In a falling state in which the player character is falling in a virtual space, the program causing the processor to execute controlling at least one of the falling directions and falling velocity of the player character that is falling based on a character operation input performed by the character. So this can, you're able to control how fast you fall. Do you bring out the sailcloth? Do you not bring out the sailcloth? Control how fast you fall, right? Um, so you can control the posture of a player character that is falling based on the character operation input performed by the player controlling a direction of the virtual camera based on a camera operation input performed by the player, so free motion camera, and controlling a position of the virtual camera such that at least the player character is included in the field of view. So you have to be included in the field of view to do this. You can't be looking off in the distance. The, the character needs to be on screen to do this, all right, to, to affect the ways that you could shoot the bow and arrow. In a special operation mode, which receives an operation input for causing the player character that's falling to perform a special action. So you're, you're just hitting a button input to cause this to happen. Um, you get to change into a posture of a player that is falling according to the component regarding at least a pitch direction of the direction of the virtual camera based on the camera operation input. Setting a shooting direction of the predetermined object during the shooting action according to the direction of the virtual camera based on the camera operation input and controlling the player character to perform the shooting action and controlling the predetermined object to move to the shooting direction based on the shooting operation input performed by the player. So you're able to basically shoot arrows in a lot of directions while falling that you've never been able to do before. All right. And here's like a, a diagram about that. You can kind of see some examples present there of ideas of how this works while falling. According to the configuration above, in the special operation mode, the posture of the player character changes accordingly to the direction of the virtual camera. So basically what you're able to do will be based on where you put the camera. Therefore, the degree of freedom of the shooting direction in which the shooting action is performed can be increased while naturally expressing the posture of the, the player falling. So you control the freedom you have to shoot your arrow. That's basically what they're saying here. While you're falling, the player has 100% control over the freedom at which the type of arrow shot they can do while falling. The game program may cause the processor to execute in the falling state, controlling the player character such that the posture of the player character corresponds to at least one of the plurality types of postures included including a posture in which an upward direction of the player character is directed downward in the virtual space, and a posture in which a forward direction of the player character is directed downward in the virtual space, and in the falling state, controlling at least one of the falling directions and falling velocity according to the posture of the player character. What they're saying is, 
basically, you can flip over on your back, look up to the sky and shoot an arrow. Or if you're just falling straight down, you can shoot an arrow down. And there's predetermined animations, essentially, that um, will pop up for those. So when they say postures, they're basically saying predetermined animations for the different ways you can shoot an arrow. So you can be falling down backwards and shoot it up. You can be falling down flat, shooting it down. But that's not the only way to shoot it in the air, of course. According to the configuration of the above, the posture of the player character that is falling can be diversified. So again, there's different animations, different things you can do. And the player character can be moved in a falling direction and or falling velocity according to the posture of the player character. The game program may cause the processor to execute in a special operation mode, controlling a motion of the player character such that the player character takes a ready posture for the shooting action towards a direction according to the component regarding at least the pitch direction, the direction of the virtual camera based on the camera operational input. So basically the direction your camera's facing, the direction your character's facing will determine what postures are available to you. Like you can't be, you know, pulling out your bow to shoot down and that's also how you shoot up. There's going to be a different, you have to move your character, basically flip your character in the air to do different things or move them in a different direction to do different things. Maybe you bust out the sail cloth to do different moves, etc. So there's just a lot of um, operational input from the player on how this actually works and what you're able to do and it's going to be a learning process for all of us the game program causes the process to execute in the special operation mode changing the ready posture of the player character as a change of position of the player character according to the component regarding the picture direction of the of the virtual camera according to the configuration of the above the player character can be caused to take a natural ready posture according to a shooting direction so the posture will be based on the direction you're going um, the game program may cause the processor to execute in the special operation mode, changing the posture of the player character such that an upward direction of the player character is directed upward in the virtual space. In response to that component regarding the pitch direction of the direction of the virtual camera is changed from a state of being downward relative to its first reference direction state uh, to being upward. So in other words, your camera mode when you're shooting up is going to go behind Link. So, as he, so basically his back is going to be falling towards the camera and you're going to be able to look above him. You know how epic that's going to be for, for if there's like a flying boss fight you know how badass a flying boss fight would be oh my god like this is the freedom we don't see this kind of freedom in games i i know this is an aside because we're, we haven't gotten to any opinions yet but this is this is badass that's what this is this is badass we got to talk about this more on the podcast tonight be sure to tune in at 8 p.m central time we have to talk about this stuff we won't go through this much depth of detail but we will do the summary we'll bring up some images and show you guys um there is a lot to talk about here a lot to digest and i don't want to you know this video is already going to be super long so i don't want to i don't want to go like for two hours here so let's just get through all this information so you guys have it and then we'll go for there. I'll, by the way, there's links to all these patents down in the description if you would like to go verify all this information because for some reason you think I'm making up this, this mambo jumbo as if this is something I would write. I, I definitely couldn't write these documents. <laughs> According to the configuration about the natural uh, uh, posture of the player character can be maintained when the shooting direction changes in response to that of the direction of the virtual camera is changed with the state being downward. Okay, yep, so we got that. The game program may cause the processor to execute in a special operation mode, changing the posture of the player character such that the upward direction of the player character is directed downward in the virtual space or a forward direction of the player uh, is directed downward in a virtual in response to the component regarding the pitch direction. All right, so that's, again, getting into how the camera angle works. According to the configuration above, the natural posture of the player character can be maintained when the shooting direction changes in response to that direction of the virtual camera is changed from the state of being upward relative to the second reference direction to the state of being downward. So in other words, you can like shoot upwards and then flip your guy and the camera will move and you can then shoot downwards. So they're saying there's just a lot of freedom of movement, right? You're not stuck in any one direction. So if you're shooting arrows upward, you're not stuck shooting arrows upward. You can change your direction right after letting go of an arrow or you could obviously, you know, not shoot the arrow and then move your character and then get into a new posture and shoot the arrow. So there's just a lot of technical mumbo jumbo here to explain how the camera movements work with this because it's obviously a pretty complex process for how free moving this is because the camera basically has to be able to move into 360 degrees, more than 360 degrees really. It's got to, it's got to be able to move in a full sphere. So... Uh, that's going to be very interesting to see how they program that in. Uh, the first reference direction may be upward relative to the second reference direction. According to the configuration above, it is possible to reduce the risk of an unnatural motion of the player character such that the posture of the player character frequently changes according to the change in direction of the virtual camera. So what they're saying is they don't want something unnatural to occur. They don't want the game to bug out. They don't want your character to start willy-nilly flipping and flopping midair. 
right? They're, they, they want something that prevents that action from occurring because it's unnatural and not really befitting of gameplay, even if it looks hilarious. If you guys have ever seen uh, Peanut Butter Gamer's Zelda Month, you'll know some glitches he has where the characters are kind of flopping all over. Like he, it's, it's something to prevent that because obviously... If the programming isn't just right, it could be easy to trick the programming into being like, oh, yeah, now the character is just flailing around. Like, they don't want that to happen. It's a bad gameplay experience. All right. The game program causes the processor to execute in the special operation mode, setting the posture of the player character at the start of the special operation mode, according to the posture of the player character immediately before the start of a special operation mode. So you get into a special mode to shoot the arrow, um, but it'll confirm the start of it. Uh, so it just locks it in. So then, you know, it's not, it's not trying to. Basically, you're enabling, you're hitting a button that enables the mode based on the direction of the camera and the character, and then it kind of locks into a special operation mode at that time. That's one way they prevent you from flopping all over the place. The game program may cause the processor to execute in the falling state, setting the virtual camera such that the direction of the virtual camera is directed upward in the virtual space based on the direction operation performed by the player. So the player determines, obviously, which direction you're facing. According to the configuration above, the player can easily perform the operation of turning the virtual camera upward, thereby enhancing operability for the game. So, yeah, it's all player controlled. None of it's canned. None of it is the game predetermining what you do. It's going to be based on your own mode. You're fighting something in the sky. It's going to be based on your own motions if you hit the damn, hit damn enemy. This isn't canned. This isn't QTE. This is literally freedom. Freedom of movement in the air while shooting a bow. Think about that, folks. Think about that. You drop in the sky and have complete freedom of movement to shoot your bow. Insane. And I, I, I was obviously wonder how wind's going to affect your arrow. Do you, do you have to consider wind? When shooting in your arrow because you're falling, right? Like that, that would feel like something that makes sense with the physics engine. So according to the configuration above, the posture of the player character can be easily changed, thereby enhancing operability of the player character. According to the configurations of the above, the player can intuitively recognize that the posture of the player character has changed by the change of direction of the camera. So the camera is going to let you know which direction you're going in, basically. In the following state, the game program may cause a processor to execute starting the special operation mode, so the special mode that enables you to shoot arrows, uh, to a predetermined key input by the player is started. So there'll be a predetermined determine button press you can use to enable the entering into the bow mode it might not be i mean it could just be as simple as drawing the bow out like you know using r and drawing the bow out or something like that um the shooting operation input may uh be put to an input to end the predetermined key input so you might have hit that to enable it but maybe now oh man the enemy moved so you want it you want to be able to back out you don't want to be stuck in that mode till you shoot an arrow right like that's not you, you need to be able to cancel it, basically. Oh, man, I'm firing upwards. Don't know the enemy moved. Like, you want to be able to naturally cancel that and get back in. So they're saying, yes, you can cancel that predetermined thing that you just did and go back to trying to choose a different direction based on the camera angle that you're sitting in. All right? So that, that, that that's just something that makes a lot of sense. Again, they, they have to put in all these parameters because this is exactly how the mechanic works. According to the configuration above, the player can start and end the special operation mode through a series of operations such as performing a predetermined key input and ending the key input, whereby operability regarding the operation to start and end the special operation mode can be enhanced. So there you go. Uh, the game program uh, may cause the processor to execute in the special operation mode, displaying an animation showing the state in which the player character appears to fall at a falling velocity lower than the falling velocity of the player character character when it's not in the special operation mode so what they're saying is your perception of falling will be slowed when you go into that special operation mode you know what that feels like remember when in breath of the wild you can jump up and slow motion shoot your arrows that's what they're saying they're saying in this special operation mode, when you draw your bow because you're not on the ground it works exactly the same. It slows down time for whatever amount of stamina or whatever whatever they used to determine. It was stamina before. So whatever they used to predetermine how long you can stay in that state, it slows down time so you can better aim your arrow. There you go. That's expanding upon an ability from Breath of the Wild. Amazing. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's see here. According to the storage medium, the information processing apparatus and the information processing system of the game processing method described above, the degree of freedom of the direction in which the player character performs an action can be increased while naturally expressing the posture of the player character in the air. These and other objects, features, aspects, and advantages of the exemplary embodiment will become more apparent from the following detailed description and taken in conjunction with the accompanying drawings and obviously uh, later on when they finally show it in-game, uh, which again, we, we haven't actually seen this yet. This is an ability we haven't seen. 
But obviously, it's describing things as they worked in Breath of the Wild versus how they're going to work in Breath of the Wild 2. So they have expanded massively on the bow mechanics, especially when it comes to free falling in the air. This, to me, is awesome. They have some amazing ideas here. And while there's a lot of mumbo jumbo in there you might not get, you might not understand, it might sound all technical, that's what this video is about. This is about getting into the nitty gritty. And we will go dive deeper into the biggest aspects of this tonight on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. This is going to be our lead topic tonight on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. We'll be talking about this because this is real. This is from Nintendo. This is about Breath of the Wild 2. This isn't speculation. This isn't rumors. This isn't, you know, leaks or anything. This is literal patents from Nintendo. It's going to be our lead topic. We're going to highlight the biggest things from this, talk about it in layman's terms, and talk about how we feel about this. So I want to thank you guys for sticking through this long video. If you did stick around all the way to the end, um, Hopefully, I presented things in a way that worked. It probably took a lot of editing to get this video together because um, there's a lot of different clips from the trailers I have to use. So, All right, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.